on. On. All right. And welcome to race number 12 of 29 here in the 1991 throwbacks. And we continue to have an incredible season so far. We are coming off of Dover where Dale Earnhardt pulled a great pit stop and ended up winning the race. He moves to fourth in points. And Mark Martin, he's still without a win this season, but he's just been the most consistent. He's still up there at the top of the points board. Uh, Rusty Wallace second, Kowicki third. We have Earnhardt fourth, Rudd fifth, all within 100 points of Mark Martin. And now, man, we're going to it. We're going to the first road course event of the season, the Banquet Frozen Foods 300 here at the Sears Point International Raceway. It's going to be awesome. And now it's time to figure out what the pull time is going to be. Coming across, the driver that's going to be on the pole is Daryl Waltrip with a speed of 191.701 miles an hour. Not the driver I was expecting to see, but hey, you know what? Wow, oh, all right. So great qualifying effort here from Daryl Waltrip as he is able to get the pole here from Sears Point. And now going to the top 10 here, we have Daryl Waltrip. He is on the pole. Mark Martin in second. We have Ken Schrader third. Davey Allison in fourth. We have Brett Bodine in fifth. Ricky Rudd sixth. We have Alan Kowicki seventh. Phil Parsons eighth. And then we have Tim Richmond in ninth. And Rusty Wallace is going to round out the top 10. So there's not really a better camera angle to get a look at the starting position here all our cameras are really looking down through the snaking s's here's the command for today's race Drivers, start those the engines are getting fired here in the s's at sears point All 42 cars fire off as they line up two by two. And coming down here. Of course, most of the people will be pitting on the left side of the front straightaway. We have a little bit of a pit road here on the right, nicknamed Gilligan's Island. If you pit there, you're usually going to have a hard day, but that doesn't mean you're immune to winning. In fact, first race here ever showed that when Rick Mast was able to win his first ever career race in the number 66 car while being on that pit road. Anyways, Daryl Waltrip. Coming now down to the line. And the green flag is out here from Sonoma, California. And we'll see the whole field flash by here for us. We go down into corner number one. It looks like Mark Martin is going to try to take the advantage, but no. Daryl Waltrip fighting back. They're still side by side going through the S's. You think Mark Martin's going to have the line advantage here going into this corner. It's a hard breaking right hand turn. Mark Martin's still there. They're still side by side battling for the lead. Now Mark's got a good line, but I'll tell you what. Now Daryl Waltrip, he's got the best line here heading through the carousel. And Daryl Waltrip is going to keep the lead. Schrader will fall in the third. Davey Ellison fourth. Ricky Rod fifth. Brett Bodine, sixth. Phil Parsons, seventh. Alan Kowicki, eighth. Looks like Rusty Wallace was just able to get around Tim Richmond for ninth. And Richmond is there in tenth. 
Now the field is going to sneak through the S's for the first time today. This race, of course, well known for the pit strategies that are typically pulled here. Well known for the pit strategies. And here we go, a hard braking sector. Daryl Waltrip looks like it's a pretty clean braking sector for him. He's able to get through there, no problem. Ricky Rudd trying to get an advantage. Here on Davey Ellison, Ellison shuts him down. Lap number one completed, leader still Daryl Waltrip. Waltrip back down through the gears. Not necessarily known as a road course specialist, but here he is out there today in the number 17 car. Trying to get his first win in quite a while. And this car looks solid so far. He seems to be pulling a little bit of a gap now on Mark Martin. So Martin now second. Schrader third, Davey Allison in fourth, and now this is the battle right here. With Davey Allison and Ricky Rudd, that's the battle for fourth. And Ricky Rudd right to the bumper of Davey Allison. Doesn't look like he can get anything done. This is such a difficult track to actually line up a pass at. Only a couple of really good overtaking zones. Yeah, you can't really pass in the S's here going downhill. It's really difficult to actually get a pass off there. Not an overtaking zone at all. I think Ricky Rudd's car is pretty fast. He's just trying to find a way to get around the 28 car. And again, it's really hard to do. And this is one of those races that are typically run, won, not necessarily on the merits of fastest car, but typically on the merits of who can play the best pitch strategy. You got to keep that in mind as well. Who's able to manage their tires the best? This track notoriously damaging on tires. Meanwhile, looks like Ricky Rudd is falling back towards the clutches of Brett Bodine there in the 75. Brett Bodine trying to hold on. Rudd going on a hard braking zone, and now it looks like Davey Allison's starting to knock on the back door. Ken Schrader, two leaders, Daryl Waltrip and Mark Martin are really starting to gap themselves now. So they're really starting to separate themselves from the pack, and I'll tell you what, right now this is looking like a really good point stay for Mark Martin. Yeah, Mark Martin, we all know he's one of the better road course racers out there. You have figure also up there. Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, Davey Allison. You know, they're all up there. Brett Bodine definitely up there. He's one of the better ones. So you think of really good road course racers. They're pretty much all up here with the exception of Daryl Waltrip really leading the pack right now in a pretty convincing fashion, I got to say as well. So Waltrip doing a fantastic job in that 17 car right now. Fantastic job that is, to say the least. Take a look at the fastest laps, and yeah, the top two are pretty far and away the fastest. Third and on back, it's pretty much a dogfight to see who's got the fastest. And actually, excuse me, a new car actually just went ahead and turned the fastest lap of the race, and that is going to be an Ernie Irvin who has already been down pit road. An interesting pitch strategy ploy here from Ernie Irvin. We'll see if that pays off. Some drivers do pit really early. Chad Little also going on that strategy. Unless, of course, they all ended up getting into an accident. Which looks like something happened here to the Prat Morosa machine. The 
let's see here. Did these guys get together in the open laps? Let's see what happened here. They're still clean through there. Amoroso looks like he's got a very strong car up here with most of the leaders. Headed Bill Elliott, right beside Morgan Shepard, Ernie Irvin also. Terry Labonte, another really good road course driver. Oh, he just runs right into the back of Morgan Shepard. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Just couldn't get the car slowed down. Ran right into the back of Morgan Shepard. Anyways. Daryl Waltrip still maintaining his slim advantage over Mark Martin. Man, these guys have really put the gap down now on third place. They are ahead by almost four seconds ahead of Ken Schrader, who's in third. Baby Allison here in fourth. Yeah, so I wasn't necessarily expecting contact like that to be happening on lap one, but yeah, Rob Moroso clearly misjudged the corner and just got right into the back. Morgan Shepard, it looked like the, speaking of bumpers being used, Ricky Rudd trying to use the bumper to get around Davey Allison here. Can he get the job done? Yes, he can. Yeah, he let him go. Man. Ricky Rudd using the bumper on Davey Allison there in the hairpin to gain position. Great move. And we've got a battle here between Tim Richmond and Alan Kowicki also. Richmond trying to get around Allen. Looks like Allen's going to fight him off here. Oh, Richmond still trying to gain position. Looks like Morgan Shepard still side by side here with Jeff Bodine. He gets around. No one else is really able to get around Jeff Bodine there. So maybe Ricky Rudd could start to make some noise. I think he's got a really fast car under him. Yeah, we know that that 26 car is real fast. I mean, the leaders have already put about five seconds on him, getting stuck behind Davey Allison, but maybe make, make using the bumper there in the hairpin on just lap five of the race. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Freaking Rudd, he's closing in on Ken Schrader too. That 26 car is fast. We're gonna have to take a look at the fastest lap times here when he comes across. I'm telling you, that 26 car is fast. Oh, yeah, he put it, put it up fifth there up on the board. You want to talk about another car that's fast? How about this one? Neil Bonnet second on the charts in that 21 car. And it's always a wild card when it comes to these road course races, man. It's always a wild card. You never, ever, ever know what's going to happen at these road course races. That's what makes these things so enjoyable. You can see Ricky Rudd trying to get to the back of Ken Schrader here. Schrader having a pretty respectable performance so far. Not exactly the driver that you'd expect to perform well on road courses, but hey... Clearly, Hendrick Motorsports brought the cars that they needed to do. Right now, they got a driver in first. Well, that's really Daryl Waltrip owning that car, but heavy, heavy relationship with Hendrick there. 
And Ricky Rudd trying to find a way around Ken Schrader. If he can make that move work, I will be shocked. <laughs> that was not that was not a good move there by Ricky Rudd. And he's got to make the move in one of the hairpins. That was not a good move by Ricky Rudd. And it looks like Rusty Wallace trying to pick off a position here from Rick Mass. Uh, not from Rick Mass, from Phil Parsons, rather. Rick Mast is in the eight. And it looks like he will indeed get the position away from Phil Parsons. Blicky trying to find a way around Parsons. Looks like a no can do. Right now, the battle remains fixated on third. The two leaders are pretty much gone from these guys. The two leaders are the six and the 17. They're up here, one, two. They're way ahead. They're almost seven seconds ahead of these guys. What you're watching here is the battle for third. And this is between Ricky Rudd and the 26, Ken Schrader and the five, and Rudd is there. Rudd really wants to make that move. Might have to do the same thing that he did to Davy Allison. He's going to have to use the bumper on Schrader sometime. Look at what Ricky Rudd is trying to do. He's trying to go on the outside of Ken Schrader. I, that is not going to work, man. I keep on trying it, though. Got to try to make something work. Try to do anything he can to get around this five machine. Right now, it's just not working out. Almost halfway through the race here, and Rudd's still trying to find a way around. I was thinking Rudd may have gone a little wide there, and now he falls back into the clutches of Davy Allison, who he already punted out of the way earlier in the race. You never know. Will Allison make a bonsai move? And good lord, he almost did. And he's going to try to make a move here on Ricky Rudd. What a daring attempt there by Davey Allison. He realizes that's not going to work because the carousel is coming up. He can't make that move there. <laughs> wow. Allison really tried to make a daring move there on Ricky Rudd. I I'm surprised he even tried that. But you know what? Considering what Rudd did to him earlier on in the race. Uh, Davey Allison holding no prisoners here. This has been a great battle here for the third, fourth, fifth, sixth position here. These guys have been racing like crazy. Well, we've had some crazy bonsai moves being done. This is clearly where the racing is. And a move by Allison to try to take the fourth position away. Can't get the job done. Yeah, looked like Ricky Rudd there got moved out of the way. So Allison definitely tried to use the bumper there. Allison tried it again. It looked like he tried to move him. Allison seems to be getting more and more daring in each and every corner. I just want to see him do that bonsai move again through the S's. That was something special right there. Makes you wonder if Ricky Rudd's maybe used up a little bit too much of his tires. Makes you wonder. Rudd, not quite able to get there. He, he, <laughs> Man, this five car train has really been something special to watch here. Sonoma, well, 
past few years that we've come here, we've known it as a caution riddle race, a wild card race, a race that anybody can win. It's so far been relatively clean today, other than Rob Moroso making heavy contact with Morgan Shepard early on in the race. So far, man, Allison really close to using the bumper again. It's been all over this 26 car. Now it looks like Rudd may have had a really good shot there at Ken Schrader. We'll see. And going into turn one. Oh, boy. And a little dust got kicked up there. I assume here something has gone wrong with Daryl Waltrip. Waltrip is really slow. Wall trip very, very slow. He is off the pace. A flat tire for the 17. He's just trying to get that limped back to pit road. This track obviously doesn't have an apron. So there's not really a place where you can pull off. Good Lord. Yeah, so something very, very wrong in the 17 car. And that is going to solidly give the lead to Mark Martin. He just needs to finish this race out. Which makes this the battle for second. Ricky Rudd looking on the outside. <laughs> Rudd is really trying hard in that 26 car. He's not on the back of him yet. He's trying to get there. Oh, man, wow. Rudd had to swerve out of the way just to avoid hitting Ken Schrader. So now Mark Martin with a nine-second advantage over Daryl Waltrip, and Waltrip, unfortunately, with that blown tire, blows his probably what will be his best chance to win all season long. He had the dominant car. He just didn't have luck on his side. Sometimes you do need a little bit of luck. You need to have things go your way. Things did not go Daryl Waltrip's way today. Mark Martin here. He's more than likely going to come away with his first win of the season here at Sears Point. And Bobby Hillen Jr., not sure what happened there. They aren't going to go three wide, are they? <laughs> That's not going to work there. Wow, Martin... <laughs> Bobby Hillen Jr. driving the wheels off of his car. And Mark Martin down pit road. As well, more than likely, everyone else will also be coming down pit road here. I don't... We'll see if anyone gambles and tries to lead uh, a lap here for bonus points. I don't think there's going to be a single taker. Anyone want bonus points? Dale Earnhardt wants bonus points. <laughs> no, he's actually pitting in Gilligan's Island. So my question now revolves to... Well, it looks like Sterling Marlin already had pitted. So now, this is going to be an interesting question of where does everyone come out? The pace car is out. Caution is out. No. Caution is out. Where's Mark Martin? Caution is out. I'm going to bring back the tape a little bit.
figure out why the caution is out here. Oh, Mickey Gibbs off the track. Let's try to figure out exactly what happened here. So Mickey Gibbs going down through the S's. It's like he's minding his own business. Oh, heavy contact with Ted Musgrave and he just goes right into the tires. Meanwhile, Mark Martin got hung up on pit road. So now he is going to have issues. Yeah. Daryl Waltrip had to bring his car behind the wall. And now Mark Martin all jacked up on his right side. Good Lord. So issues for Mark Martin on this pit stop. Jimmy Spencer's in the tire barrier. So issues for Jimmy Spencer. This changes everything. Cars are still trying to get around the pace car. I'm trying to figure out what the running order is. And right now it looks like Ken Schrader is the leader of this race. They all, do they all have to go around the track one more time underneath the yellow flag? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure what happened here with the timing. Looks like that's the case. So right now, after all those pit stops, Ken Schrader is the leader of this race. Mark Martin isn't even in the top 25. Daryl Waltrip is going to be finishing 42nd after a flat after that flat tire ended up tearing his car to all shreds. It finally exploded. He had to bring the car behind the wall. Ricky Rudd has also exited from the race. So the three fastest cars of the day are all out of the race. They all just dropped out. Meanwhile, where is the pace car? Pace car's all the way up here, so I don't know. Are they still racing here? I don't know if they're going for position or what's going on here. Got to get everyone lined up. I don't even know where the pace car is. Pace car is way ahead of these guys still. And the lights are off on the pace car. These guys got to get up here. Uh, we're definitely not going to file the entire field behind the pace car here. As NASCAR seems pretty intent that we're going to be going green here. And I, I think maybe half the field is going to get lined up behind the pace car here. Yeah, I think that might be generous. No bonnet's going to be coming away with the top five maybe here. I mean, we're going to get some of the field lined up at least, but not a lot of it. I mean, we do have like half the track to go yet. No, we still have people that need to go around the entire carousel yet. They're not going to get to the back of this line. Jimmy Spencer's not going to make it. Rob Moroso, Gil Jarrett, Late Speed, Jeff Purvis. These guys are not going to make it. 
Maybe they do, but Jeff Purvis definitely doesn't. Late Sweet won't. Dale Jarrett won't. Rob Moroso definitely won't. And neither will Jimmy Spencer. None of those guys are going to make it here. So they're going to get a pretty much a rolling start here compared to everyone else. So whoever that advantage is, I don't know. I really don't know who that advantage is. One thing I do know is that this is going to be one crazy restart. Is Ken Schrader slow coming to the line? What's going on here? Ken Schrader leaning back. Green flag is out. <laughs> Ken Schrader laying back on the start, playing possum. An interesting strategy here given by Ken Schrader, and he's going to give his teammate here, Tim Richmond, the, the third position because of it. That's that that was a great strategy there by Ken Schrader. He just played possum there right on the start. Well we'll have to see what happened, what the ruling is gonna be on that one to see if they're gonna let that restart stand or not. I don't see why not. He didn't do anything illegal. No rules in the rule book says that you can't do that. He's all good. Greater cleared by NASCAR officials. Now Ken Schrader's got to hold off who is going to be the points leader at the end of this crazy, crazy turn of events. Yeah, now he's got to try to hold off Rusty Wallace who's trying to get win number four on the season. Schrader's just trying to get win number two. Tim Richmond's going for win number one. Bodine's going for career win number one. Alan Kowicki. Alan Kowicki to pit road? Oh, boy. Same thing with Jeff Bodine. We got people going three wide through the hairpin. Are you crazy? <laughs> Chad Little also in uh, pit road as well. Meanwhile, Mark Martin. This is going to be a horrific points day for him. He's going to he, he's going to lose a lot of points with that. Finishing outside the top 20. And Ken Schrader's starting to pull away here. Yeah, I think Schrader's got this. Going to come away with his first career road course win. A lot of cards had to fall his way to do it. But I think just about every possible thing that needed to happen went Ken Schrader's way tonight. It's hard to question that. Schrader really just had everything fall his way. All the cards went correctly for him. Rusty Wallace just trying to get to the back bumper. He wants to go for the win. He can't do anything stupid, though, because Tim Richmond, you know, the 1987 points champion, Tim Richmond is right behind him. He is right there. <laughs> oh, man. And he uses the bumper. There he goes. Richmond right around Rusty Wallace. Oh, man, you can see he jacked up the rear tires. Wallace fighting hard back on the inside. Richmond trying to go around. It looks like he powered around Rusty Wallace. Two laps to go. Brett Bodine trying to make the move now on the two car. And Bodine let him go. Hendrick looking for a 1-2 finish here at Sears Point. And Richmond trying to get out of a funk that he's been in. Can he potentially run down his teammate, Ken Schrader? Oh boy, that, it's entirely possible he can get there too. Is he going to be able to run him down though? 
It's going to be close. A lap and a half to go. I think Richmond's faster. Yeah, Ken's going to have to run here. Ken's going to have to really run from his teammate. I, it, it's entirely possible that this race is going to be determined on the last lap pass because Tim Richmond is coming. He's there, too. He is right on the back bumper of Schrader. Can he get there? Doesn't make a move. Richmond is there. White flag. If these guys wreck here, these teammates don't play each other nice. Rusty Wallace is right behind both of them. He can go ahead and take that position away. Wow, Schrader drove it in hard. Raider is going. Schrader trying to hold on for his first ever road course win. Looks like he gapped his teammate there. That gave him a good cushion. That should give him the win. I don't think that Tim Richmond's going to be able to make that all back up. And not during the S's. He's going to have to do something remarkable here going into the final hairpin. He made up a lot of ground there. He, uh, he's at, you know what? He's actually right back on him. This is going to be a crazy finish, folks. Final time through the S's. Can Richmond make a move? He couldn't quite get to him, but he's staying right on him. Richmond is right there going down to the final hairpin. Do they use the bumpers? Richmond trying to make the move. He missed. He went in hard, but he missed Schrader. Can he keep Wallace behind him? No, he yes, he can. Ken Schrader is going to win the banquet frozen foods 300. He tried to dive bomb it hard into the final hairpin. And he ended up missing the rear bumper of his teammate. Wow. A one-two finish here from Hendrick Motorsports. As Ken Schrader barely hangs on by the skin of his teeth. To pick up another win this season. Mark Martin able to fight his way all the way back up to 16th. But that's probably not going to be good enough. As we take a look at this top 10, look at this top 10. Ken Schrader, Tim Richmond, Rusty Wallace. All right, and now look at this. Brett Bodine, Neil Bonnet, Phil Parsons, Sterling Marlin, Terry Labonte, Bill Elliott, and Rick Mast ends out the top 10. Larry Pearson, 12th. I don't even know how that happened. Wally Dullenbach finished ahead of Dale Earnhardt. And again, look at the names. Alan Kowicki, late pit stop. 32nd, Jeff Bodine, late pit stop, 34th, Ricky Rudd, accident, Davey Allison, accident, Daryl Waltrip, tired failure, just a ton of drivers not able to survive the Sears Point Raceway today. And as we take a look at the point standings, unsurprisingly, Rusty Wallace now leads the standings. Mark Martin drops down to second, and now it seems like that really shook up the point standings a lot because Dale Earnhardt is now in third, 111 points back. But that's a really big gap, and then it's really close for the next few position for the next few positions. And there's not really another really huge back gap until you get to 10th, where an Irvin is 48 behind Allison. But it is still anyone's championship, no doubt about it. So Rusty Wallace finally taking back the points lead after having that extremely hot start. Ken Schrader picks up his second win of the season and actually now has the most laps led out of any driver this year. So Schrader's just 
You know, he's doing really well. He's just got to put consistent finishes together. And if he can go ahead and do that, I mean, Schrader can put together a championship contending season. Richmond moves up into sixth. He's still winless. Elliott winless. He's up to fifth. You know, you, how many, you know, th after 1989, how many people would be saying two years later, Elliott and Richmond would be entering the first Pocono race with no wins. That's just incredible. A crazy, crazy race here from Sears Point. We'll see you next time for the Pocono Raceway for the Miller Draft 500.